Chattanooga School for the Arts and Sciences Thursday had the grand unveiling of its indigenous species tile wall. The wall was a culmination of work and funding by the CSAS parent volunteers, Cornerstone Community Bank, the City of Chattanooga, Mark Making, and students. The project took two years, according to Francis McDonald, founder of Mark Making. It's a uh, ceramic tile wall in the back of the school. It's in the parking lot where there are, I don't know, 800 parents that come and go and drop off their kids. And it's a wall that spans about 100 feet. It's around four to eight feet tall. We did 600 square feet of ceramic tile done by all the elementary students, 440 of them, plus all the art students from the upper school. And it's quite a coup. Nobody has ever done this. I looked online for um, large hand-painted ceramic walls and there were a few here and there but none like this this one's kind of oozed back this is definitely a piece of art it's not like it's not a craft project it's definitely a major work of art the children were asked to pretend they are birds flying over the Chattanooga landscape and are seeing a bug they want to eat or a blade of grass they want in their nest. But basically, what are they seeing from a bird's eye view? So they were encouraged to think of indigenous species, that's the name of the piece, indigenous species that is on the ground. And so that what they did was they chose an element that also had some relationship to something they were studying in their curriculum. And they drew them, first we did a paper tile class where everybody drew and did their compositions and then did the same thing on the ceramic tile but what they did was they put the bug in the middle so and it was a bird's eye view so you're looking down on the bug McDonald explained they wanted no horizontal lines in the artwork so we didn't want to say here's the sky here's the earth and here's this bug crawling because when you're talking about all of those tiles you need to look at them in the same way we don't want horizon lines because lines on the edges of the tiles create visual stop signs and we wanted a whole wall that flowed, that all looked good together. So all the figuration was done in the middle, and then on the outside of the set of four tiles that each student did, one square foot consisting of four tiles, we did what we call little fasteners. And the little fasteners were little pieces of color, and what that does is it fastens the different students' tiles together. Um, just like you put on a coat in the morning and you have a button in a buttonhole. You put those together so your coat doesn't fall off. Well, in this instance, we put pieces of color on the edges so that it buttoned so the coat wouldn't fall off so that the piece held together and didn't separate into different chunks of work. It looks very much sewn together. That's one reason why I would definitely call it a piece of art and not just some thoughtless pile of tiles. Students ages 5 through 12 participated in the project. They're beautiful. We really thought about the technique a whole lot before we did it. Plus they had their paper tiles for warm-up, but they used underglazed pencil. So we had a real texture of a pencil, which is cool. We had green pencils and black pencils, so they would draw and make texture marks. In our classes we look at line, shape, color, and texture, so we were sure to mix several different kinds of lines, different shapes, and different textures into the bug, the ant, the ladybug, the pile of grass, the leaf, or whatever it was they were doing. So we mixed our textures, lines, and shapes and did that with the pencils. They started with the pencils and then we went back in and worked with four colors. We used green, blue, yellow, and red. So they're very beautiful. They're really beautiful. And there's a classical side to that because of the fastener thing. It definitely looks, to me, it looks Uzbek. It looks a little bit Central Asian. The colors are a little bit French provincial, maybe. Maybe it's very beautiful. She said the children were amazed at the unveiling. I don't think they had any idea. Well, and plus it took so long to do that some of them actually forgot. So the tile wall goes up. Oh, where did that come from? There was some of that. And there's a whole lot of, well, you know, kids, they're like, which tile is mine? Where's my bug? Or where's my gopher? Or where's my whatever? And we were very fearful that they wouldn't be able to find it. We didn't do it class by class. Once again, in order to see one hall wall that flowed, we didn't want to break it up and say, here are all the kindergartners, here are all the fifth graders. We didn't want to break it up because they have different levels of sophistication. And to make it all flow together, we hung it kindergarten next to fifth, next to third, next to second. We mixed it all up. So of course that makes the tiles hard to find, which is all the better. What if we lost one and didn't know it? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that happens. Matter of fact, I ran into a teacher who had some of the sample tiles that she took over to one of the funders and forgot to give them back to me. So that's two kids whose tiles are just not up there. And when you see the whole thing, it just knocks you over. It's like, oh my God, I can't believe elementary kids did this. It truly is amazing.
The project was a long time getting started. We went to the PTSA in 2009 and actually Mark Making approached them about doing this project and it was a long time getting started. The PTSA put up some of their own money and then we started it in the fall of 2009. We started having the paper tile classes. Most of those we finished before Christmas. We took all the kids over to the upper school art studio which is a real thrill when you know you're a kindergartner and you get to go to the big people's art studio. That was a big thrill. And then we um, wax resist the back, we dip them in the glaze, then we farmed them out to probably five different places that fired them. It was a real big ordeal. We were running all over town trying to get tiles fired. That took a long time. The last tile was fired two weeks before the wall was installed and the wall was put up in one day. We had about 30 people out there, some students, volunteers, and some mark making volunteers and school volunteers. Got it up and one day came back the next day and grouted. Bam. And we're still ceiling and um, you know cleaned up the lot and they they planted pansies and now it's amazing but as beautiful as it looks today the wall almost didn't become a reality mark making approached them about doing the wall they voted to put up some landscape money the PTSA voted to put landscape money up for doing this wall and we said okay we will we will match your amount we will match your amount and um, but we're not going to do this unless you find funding for normal art classes. Well, they said no problem. Allied has done this year after year after year. Well, Allied didn't do it. I mean, uh, Allied of course can do whatever they want, and decided that year um, that there were other candidates they preferred to work with. So then there was a mad skirmish, and they came to me and they said, "Well, do 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 do," and I'm like, "Well, find the money. Otherwise, we're out. We're the deal's off." So they shopped around town, and actually, Bonnie Stoloft worked very hard to secure funding for the art classes from the Cornerstone Community Bank, and we're very grateful for them. So they got the money. So we said, "Okay, let's do it." We had the money. We had the match, and and we went forward with our plans. The wall is located in the back of the school. Mark Making is a nonprofit organization founded in 2008. It is funded by grants from local foundations, art and civic agencies, and private donors. To learn more about Mark Making, go online to markmaking.org or go to Mark Making on Facebook. For Around and About, I'm Julie Steele.